So my challenge to you is, what if you didn't have to do anything about anything at all? Nothing at all to do, nothing at all to do about anything. Yes, make a cup of tea because that doesn't give you any trouble. Whatever it is you have to do, answer the phone, make this appointment, whatever. But it does not accompanied by this idea that there is something that I need to do to be stable in the awareness. Because I tell you, that is a trap. Forget about it. If you touch this idea, you believe it instantly into existence. And then you have to believe another idea to remove it. So why not drop both ideas in the first place and stay where you are? You're simply here within which all that arises for you, including the sense of spirituality, forget about spirituality then. Forget about enlightenment and forget about, forget about you also. And what remains here? That which cannot be gotten rid of remains. It's just that, simpler than simple. Sometimes we overuse the intellectual faculties, which are only meant to take you up to the seeing. And thereby they say, goodbye, we have served you enough, they will go. You're simply here. All this knowledge that we acquire called spiritual knowledge is only a mirror for the timeless to see itself. And for what reason? For no other reason than it's fascinated with its own recognition for some reason. I don't see that the idea that something is difficult, which is a persistent notion in the psyche of the human expression of consciousness, that we are just have to do something to kind of, sometimes you're speaking like also a sense that we must get something accurately. So I said, no, there's no accuracy in the self. Or everything is the self. If you give up all your notions, all your effort to try and get somewhere, just drop it right here now, because you have the power to do it. Just drop it. Yes. Just like you're sitting in a restaurant full of people clinking glasses and, and uh, utensils and stuff and talking and there's music, and yet you can have a sweet conversation with your friend sitting across the table because you don't let it in. Yeah. In the same way, you don't let these thoughts in, that there is something that I need to do to just to stay more present. And the minute you are without this thought, whew, the recognition is here. You know what? Oftentimes, this moment of seeing is attended by great laughter. There's nobody laughing, it's just, ah. It seems too simple to be true. Because how many books, how many libraries, how many CDs, how many teachers, how many stories? Can it all be pointing to this simplicity, my God? What a joke, what a strange thing that I simply am. Some full acceptance of this ever-present truth happens, as it were. We can give it the title of grace or sort of benediction or whatever it is, but it simply happens. And this movement that there is something that needs to be corrected, yes, at times I can say this, because another time I might tell you, you know what, you need to stop doing that and do this. And there has to be that flexibility, that openness, which is present in the beingness, to actually hear that and see the sense in that in the moment, and still see that, although you have to do something to see that, actually you have to do nothing to be that. So this is a kind of paradox that seems to happen. Hmm? And we are mostly molested by these thoughts that something gets in the way. Yes. So there's a time when I'll tell you, yes, in the moment, this thing seems to be in the way. And I'll also ask you, in the way of what? Yes. And what is witnessing the sense of this obstruction being in the way of what? We have said that awareness cannot be on the other side of working through any process or practice. It, can, it has to be that in which even the very idea, the striving, the first thought happens already in the awareness. So any journey from that thought onward can only happen in awareness, but cannot be taking you to awareness as an objective goal. It is only the, the, the discovery of the subject to itself. Uh -huh. And sometimes when you read it, of course, in trying to convey 
that which really cannot be conveyed with words. It cannot be touched or carried in the word. At best, you may say, out of the irrefutable authority of the seeing, those words are imbibed with a sort of presence. They have a power in them. They have more light or something in them when they come from that seeing, at best. Yes. That when you yourself are the seeing and the experiencing, and yet beyond at the same time, you cannot explain this, and as I said before, thankfully you don't have to write a thesis about it. It's just your own inner seeing. Something very private, let's use the word for that, for the moment. But it cuts away, strips back all these layers of should-dos and should-do-nots and leave the truth in its nakedness as it is here present now. What can be simpler than that? Prior even to simplicity, you are that. Our minds are really enjoying this complete rest. When the mind is in complete rest, meaning that it's not carrying any intention, any notion that there's something to be attained in order to be something, it spontaneously is one with self. It is self is self. Yes. Drop the notion that something stops you from being this. That's only a notion arising in this. What is this? And who is there outside of this to know it? In this that we are, it does not even say, I am this. This is why I said, missing the obvious. Because we engage with some construction about what this must be. And then looking at your mind and your conditioning, you feel unworthy. I'm not worthy of that, actually. You identify with that, which gives a sense that you are less than. Because as long as there's a search, there is a sense something is missing. Therefore, this is why they're searching. Mm -hmm.